we'd like to welcome you to WLJC, and we'd like to say we're glad to be a part of this station and maybe a help to somebody out there that maybe is lost and need, in need of the Savior. And I'd like for you to know that if you're out there lost, that that's the reason we're here, is maybe to be an outreach to help somebody out there that's in need of a Savior. And Jesus Christ is your only answer. And this station goes to a lot of different places, the rest homes and hospitals, and right into homes where people can't get out to church. And that's a big help. And, and when you visit hospitals and you see this on TV and, and people glad it's there in rest homes, uh, it makes you feel proud to be a part of it. So uh, we just want to thank you for watching. If you can support, I know it would be helpful. Just pray for us most of all. This, this station needs prayer. The devil's going to fight in every way. So God bless you, and we're glad you're watching. Have a good night. Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, I want you to stay tuned for uh, uh, till 8.30. We've got uh, Stepping Out on Faith with us tonight, and uh, now Margaret's just out. She asked us to, uh, if we would host this morning, because we had something to celebrate. And uh, so she didn't have Vegas very much we offered to uh, host for, and uh, but... Um, I know a lot of people, they call in here, and, and it used to be a lot more than it is lately, but the men or the women would call in and want us to find them a, a companion and a husband or wife, and, but, which we, we don't do that. But I just thought since it's our anniversary, I would tell you how Bill and I got together. And um, so... Uh, this is our special anniversary. We was married uh, July the 15th, 1995. And, um, well, um, yeah, uh, 97. No wonder here he's having to correct me already. But 95 was an important day, too. And um, um, so we started out, both of us originally from Lee County, and, and they had moved to Indiana. And um, Bill and his family used to come down and, and visit with my mom and dad. And I'd see them all through the years. <clears throat> and his wife was my first cousin, uh, Geneva. And um, they were married for 50 years. And um, they lived in uh, Columbia City, Indiana. And they had, had uh, three sons and two daughters. And she died with cancer. In that uh, seventh month, the 22nd of 95, and that's a, uh, another year that is in, that you know stand, stands out in our mind. And then my husband Chester Cox, uh, he died 13 days before our 50th anniversary, and with heart problems. And uh, he died June the 17th of 95, uh, just one month apart. Uh, and I know when um, I'd forgot to call and tell them about it, and they found uh, they read it in the newspaper, the Three Forks, they were getting it. And um, so um, we had one son and two daughters, and my son is the one that died April the 22nd this year with uh, heart trouble, and um, we've been going through a lot of problems. Um, both Bill and I had taken our families to church to serve the Lord when we were younger. Bill had a singing group, um, his wife and, and three sons. Um, they sung all gospel songs. And um, most of my life, I was in uh, a Sunday school teacher. And after Chess died, um, no thoughts of remarrying ever entered my mind. I stayed busy answering the phones and things up here and uh, meeting all the singers and just talking. I was busy. 
Then a uh, bill came down for April telethon in 97, that's two years later, and we had kept up with the news of the family by phone calls, and since Geneva and Chess had uh, died one month apart. And that's when, when he came down, that's when my mind kind of changed. I thought, well, maybe I should check on him a little bit uh, more often. And then by the 1st of July, with their phone bills over $150 a month, we decided to get married July the 15th, 1997. So we've had a great 16 years. Both of our families get along well with no family problems. And uh, then on the bottom I said, yes, love is for the young at heart, even if you're old. And one thing that I'll have to tell this, one thing that always gets me a-going, uh, I fuss at him when we go to the store and we buy several bags of groceries or anything we buy, he tries to gather them all up and carry them out by himself. Well, he's the one has got the cane, and here I, I'm going just carrying my purse, and so I start fussing at him because uh, I'm wanting to help him. And one time he got to the door, he, you know, carried it from the cash register over just outside the door. And he said, oh, here's you some to carry. I said, I'm not going to her. You carry it yourself. <laughs> but he's getting better at that. He's really, um, he sort of lets me help him sometimes. So that, and then Bill, what he was going to read was uh, concerning how, um, how to choose a mate. And uh, it uh, encourages you. So, Bill, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you, you, I started to say, tell anything you want to know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You always tell me there's two sides to every story, and then the truth to be told. So I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> well, first, pull that right there. <clears throat> well, why do I have to do that? You're supposed to be. Well, I forgot it a while ago. Okay. Now, and that was uh, the first thing I, I was aiming to say, I've got the same dress on. I had at my wedding um, 16 years ago, only thing, the buttons kind of, um, they're not gold anymore, I just took them off. So that's our wedding picture. Okay, mm -hmm. Bill, now it's your turn. <coughs> well, you know, uh, I have known her all my life, practically, and I knew she was a wonderful lady, but I wondered what in the world would she want with me. I'm nothing special, that's for sure and certain. But you know, I did think about her a lot. As a matter of fact, I had prayed about her and I'd call her name in prayer. But I don't know, you know, you're supposed to believe when you're praying, but I still couldn't get in my head that you would have anything to do with me. Praise the Lord, he brought us together and here we are. But you know, she did come out there. She stayed seven years out there in Indiana with me. And I, I fell in love with this station and the work that it was doing. And I, I wanted to come back. I've always wanted to come back home. This has been home to me. I was gone 54 years, but this was still home to me. And uh, so we got married. Uh, I went over to Carlisle, Ohio, picked her up on the 22nd day of June, or the July, 15th day of July. I'm getting all mixed up myself. That's been a long time ago. But anyway, on the 15th of July, I went to Carlisle, Ohio, and picked her up. <coughs> and we drove to Columbia City, went straight to the courthouse, got her marriage license, and I called my pastor, and. He was fishing, and I told his wife to tell him to come over as soon as he got home and bring his marrying book, and he did, and we went on down to my daughter's house. She cooked us a good dinner, and we spent time with them, and then she took off from work that night, and my other daughter and my daughter-in-law was working. They got off around 3 o'clock. So they came down around 3.30 or 4, the pastor came over, and we got married. And I just, I know that right then I'd married the prettiest lady in the world. 
And you know what? I still believe it today. And I do love her. I, I have to say that. God does provide when you talk to him. But I, if I did, that's beyond me because my doubts was high that she'd have anything to do with him. But she did, and we're here. And we've had a wonderful 16 years together. And I give God the praise for every bit of it because he brought us together and he's kept us together. You know, it's no trouble to love someone if you've got the love of God in your heart and they've got the love of God in their heart. It's no problem to love and to get along and have a wonderful life. So I just praise God tonight for Shannon and the happiness that she has given to me because I, I was like her. I didn't think I'd ever get married again. But then as the years passed and God does ease the hurt. And then we got talking and we decided to get married and we had a wonderful time. But the one thing about it, I was going to church by myself and I'd always have an unspoken request. So First Sunday after we got married, we went to church and I introduced her to some of them and I said, now, that unspoken request that I've had, had you praying for, here she sits. <laughs> so she was a little stunned at that, but, but it was true. And uh, I want to thank God for the years he's given us together. Me and my first wife, we had had 50 years, eight months, and eight days together before she was called away. And it, it really hurt, and I didn't think that life was worth the living. But I tell you, it is. It's definitely worth the living. We've had a wonderful eight, 16 years together, and we've worshiped God together, and praise God for his blessing. So I'm going to read something with I want to read some stuff here from the Bible. Because I, this is something that, that is really some good information. And this is something that I wish that all parents would take in their heart and do just what it says here. Because it's very important to the family. And this is talking about the son. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct his, thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. He shall be health, it shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with thy first fruits of all thine increase. So shall the barn be filled, with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the death chastisement of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. I, I just... Pray to God that all parents out there today would understand this and uh, teach their kids because they're not going to teach the kids in school no more. And God does definitely answer prayers. And if you teach your kids the laws of God, our leaders are not making laws that uh, that corresponds with the laws of God. They're going strictly against the Lord and all that he stands for. 
I seriously doubt if we got one man in office anywhere that's truly a born again Christian. And our Bible tell, my Bible tells me, select the men that's full of the Holy Spirit to rule. And we don't have it. We need our, the parents are teaching the kids because they're teaching them in school to go right against the Word of God and His, and His teachings. So, <clears throat> I know when we're going <laughs> to bless your heart. We're going to go to Heavenly Father. We truly thank you, Lord, from the depths of our heart for this opportunity to be in your sanctuary, Lord, to try to spread your gospel, try to reach the people out there, Lord, that don't know you. Lord, that they might find peace in their heart in accepting you as their personal Savior. Lord, we know that there is joy in serving you because we've been serving you for some years now. And Lord, we just thank and praise you for that opportunity, for what you've taught us. And Lord, we just ask you to bless us tonight. Help us, Lord, to spread your gospel, that it might touch the hearts of the lost, that they'd be touched and come to you before it's everlastingly too late. And Lord, we ask you to bless our singers tonight that's come to sing praises to you and give a testimony of your love, your mercy, and your grace. We ask you, Lord, to bless the phone operators that give them the right word to say, the people that calls in. Lord, that they might know the truth, because you tell us to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Lord, we know that to be true. And we just pray, Lord, that we can get it out and get it across to the people. We can only do that, Lord, with your help. So Lord, anoint your word. Let it go out. Let it touch the hearts of the lost. Help us, Lord, to see that victor sign go up tonight. Bless each one, Lord, that takes a part in this service. And Lord, we pray for Sister Margaret and ask you to bless her. Wherever she's at tonight, we know, Lord, she's serving you. And all that's accomplished in this life, we'll never bow our own worthy heads and never fail to bow our own worthy heads, give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask to make this request. Amen. <clears throat> And tonight, we have the group with us that's absolutely no strangers. I know that all of you have seen and heard them and love them. Stepping out on faith from Thelma, Kentucky, 41260. And their phone number is 606-789-6919. And your contact, Brother Lester Green. Their church affiliation is the Hager Hill Free Will Baptist and Third Avenue Free Will Baptist Church. So if you want to, and they do have CDs for sale, you can just contact Brother Lester Green at 606-789-6919 and he'll tell you how to get them. So let's go right now to Stepping Out on Faith. God bless you folks. Our Savior paid our cost The day had come that He would have to die All that torment on the tree He died for you and me So one day we could walk by His side Jesus paid the price It was His sacrifice So someday we could live eternally He gave His life for all for our mistakes, Jesus paid the price. Soon the time will come that God's only Son will come. But if your soul's not right, you'll never see the light of that city he's prepared for you and me. Jesus paid the price, it was his sacrifice, so someday we could live eternally. He gave his life for all, and on him you must go, for our mistakes.
Jesus paid the price. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank God. Praise God that He did. Amen. We're glad to be here with you tonight. Thankful for another opportunity that uh, we've been blessed with to be here and to worship with you tonight through songs. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Brother Philip Ramey. I pastor at 3rd Avenue Free Will Baptist Church in Prestonsburg. It's Brother George Sires over here on the mantle, and of course Lester and Wilder Green uh, here. We make up the group Stepping Out on Faith. And so our prayer is tonight that maybe through something that we say or a song that we sing or a testimony that we give, uh, that we might be a blessing to you tonight. And so, and uh, just as that first song says, we acknowledge tonight that we're not our own but we're bought with a price Amen. Amen. and that That's price exactly was paid right. on the cross of Calvary Amen, there when Jesus hung on the cross of Calvary all the sins of humanity were accumulated together yes, sir. and imputed upon Christ right. on the cross and he became our sin Amen. so the writer said he became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God Amen, through sir. him so through faith in a risen Savior we can be counted righteous Amen. in the sight of God tonight thank Amen, God Phil. and that's the gospel message that's yes. the message that we stand Stand on. Paul said, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for Amen. our sins according to the Scripture, and that he was buried and rose again the third day Amen. according to the Scripture. Amen. And my friend tonight, right. if you can believe that in your heart, yeah. and confess it with your mouth, because the Bible says it's with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. If you can believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth, the Scripture says that thou shalt be saved and if you need any help any counseling with that feel free to call in anytime tonight while we're singing so we'll try to sing a few songs tonight and be a blessing to you you pray for us while we do he's my friend when i'm hungry and he's my shelter from the trouble say happy anniversary to you folks. Amen. I guess we've probably known you just about that whole time, haven't we? <laughs> I think we Pretty have. Much. Yeah, <laughs> I believe we have. Been, we've known for a long time and been great friends. You know, I, I thank God that he puts roses in our life along the way. Amen. And we consider you some of them roses. And all the folks here at WLJC uh, tonight, we're just so glad to be here. 
But I'm more important that, as Brother Philip was saying, I'm so glad that we can gather together in this place. Mm -hmm. And we can worship a risen Savior. Right. And we can send the gospel message out to wherever it goes, on the internet, everywhere, to whosoever, the Bible says. And there's a lot of them out there nowadays, the way this world is going. And as you said about the leadership of our country, and the, it's just, you know, I'm, I listen for the rustling of angels' wing, Brother Billy. I, I, I believe it's getting that close that it's coming. So if you're out there tonight and you've been dealing with getting saved or struggling with something, call upstairs. There's folks upstairs that will answer the phone and they'll lead you down and tell you exactly about what Jesus Christ has done for you and how it's a free gift. That's right. You know, uh, if we have to lay a million dollars down here and say the first one that come get here can have it. Boy, they, I would say we probably have to beat them off. But this is more preciousness because the Bible tells me that that money is going to burn away one That's day. Right. But the things of Jesus Christ will last forever. Amen. I'll be quiet. Amen. We're doing the work. He said we're tickled to be here tonight and uh, uh, just say to uh, Bill and Shannon happy anniversary Lester and I celebrated our 31st wedding anniversary July 2nd and um, thank thank the Lord for 31 years and you know it seems like anymore you know you don't hear of people being married very long at all and I thank God that when he puts two people together he seals it and he makes Amen. it right and I thank God for that and um, last time I was here, I was requesting prayer for my mom. Uh, she was suffering with cancer, and February 22nd, she went home to be with the Lord. And uh, this is the first time that I've stood here that I knew she wasn't home praying for us. Because I'd always call her, because she knew how nervous that we'd get. And I'd always call and say, Mom, pray for us. She'd say, Oh, you know I will, sissy. 
And tonight's the first night that I know that she's not there praying for me, but I know she's over there watching and praying for me. And miss her, but, uh, you know, I had so many people to come and tell me that uh, Sister Margaret had given that out on the program. Right after she passed away, somebody had called in, and Sister Margaret gave it out, and uh, that they were requesting prayer for our family. And I, I thank you all so much for that. You'll never know how much that meant to me and my family to know that we've got friends all over and uh, that you all were praying for us. And I thank you for that. And Sometimes we're like Aaron and her. You know, we have to hold up the hands like they did in the battle. And I, I thank God for the prayer warriors out there that, that, that this radio program, this TV program reaches out. You know, it's unbelievable. I, I know you all get to see a lot, talk a lot, but when we get out and get away, it is just completely unbelievable at the outreach that this ministry has. Yeah. And boy, it's needed worse now than it ever has been. God knows what he's doing because when we first started coming down here about 18 years ago, I think it was in 25 counties. But now it's worldwide. And look at the shape that the world's in. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is anchoring the storm right now, folks. Yeah. I'm telling you, amen. Uh, Y'all just pray for us tonight. I'm glad to be here. What are we doing? That's all you with me. In a dream I was there When they crucified Jesus In my dream I saw His great agony I ran to the man that was piercing his body. And when I pulled him away, that soldier was me. No, only a dream. No, only a dream. I crucified Jesus. Was my sins he bore? Was my sins he bore? And Peter was there And his heart was so troubled And many that Jesus Had touched by the way well, They beheld their Lord Their bleeding and dying And in the dream I could see That soldier was me Shannon and Billy, it was just like we were holding that hammer that day when they nailed him to that tree because it was part of our sins, our sins, all of them, that was nailed to that tree that day. But I'm so glad the Bible says that one drop, the pen drop, the head, head of a pen, covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Boy, did I have a bunch of them to be covered up, and I'm glad they're not there anymore. Amen. Never to be brought up against me again. Bless you, Lester. I'm glad for the blood. I was blessed yesterday morning to preach uh, about uh, the significance of the soul. And you know, when God, uh, and I still believe that God created, amen. On. One commentator said that <laughs> you can read the first three words of Genesis, and if you can't believe that, there's no need to read any further because it says, in the beginning, God. Amen. 
But God, when God uh, heaped up the mountains and God flung the stars in the sky and God carved up out the rivers and the streams, God made the, the fowls of the air and beasts of the earth and all the creatures in the depths of the sea. There on the sixth day of creation, God molded man into his yeah. own image. And then God did something that he didn't do for any other creation. Amen. God breathed into man's nostrils and man became a living soul. That's right. And so the soul is so significant. The soul is durable. The soul is everlasting. The soul is the inner man, the part that, uh, the part that, that learns and the part that loves and the part that hates and the part that reasons. Yeah. And the soul is durable and the soul is very valuable. You know how valuable the soul is? <laughs> Jesus put so much value on the soul in, in, in Matthew chapter 16 that he said, What would it profit a man on, if he gained the whole world? Yeah, man and lost his soul. Yes. And so therefore he was showing us how valuable the soul is. You know, a lot of people in the world today are seeking for worldly things and seeking for a fame and fortune and things of this world. But my friend, I'm glad tonight that if we've got Jesus, that we've got all that we need. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I had nothing but heartaches and troubles. I was spending my lifetime in vain. I had nothing but doubts and confusion. But now I have everything. Everything I need to make me happy. Listen now. Well, I've got Jesus me the way. Amen. Well, he saved me and he gave me life eternal. And now I have everything. I was making Big plans for my future. I was seeking for fortune and fame. But then I prayed for life's only me. And now I have everything. Everything. I've got Jesus to show me the way. Well, he saved me and he gave me life eternal. That's good stuff. You know, I, that's, I, that's my testimony song. I say that every time we sing it. Because I thought I had the world all figured out. I was going to be, have my house paid off by this age. I was going to have this done by this age. And I was going to be ready to retire by the time I reached 45 years old. I knew I had it all written out, laid out exactly. I was going to have every, my house paid for, everything. But you know what? About 20 years ago, I run headlong into a man by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And he changed my want to's. Stuff of this world don't interest me anymore. I'm seeking things over yonder, amen, whose builder and maker is God. If you're out there today and you're lost, you need to pick up the phone and call in, amen. As Brother Philip, he's done preached, I wish he'd go ahead and just cut loose and preach a little bit. <laughs> the blood, the blood, the blood. There's nothing else but the blood, amen. I'd like for my wife to sing that Crimson River song. Yeah, I believe that's what we're going to do. Uh, before I forget, I do want to send... Uh, 
this song out to Brother Bill. He asked us last time to sing this. Uh, this is one of his favorite songs, and we'll send this out to them for their anniversary. And a uh, couple friends that we need to send some songs out to tonight, uh, Sister Sally Wireman and all of her family over in McGoffin County, say hello to them. I know they're watching tonight. And sweet, sweet family. We enjoyed being Amen. with them. Uh, Sister Jewel Wallen and her husband Wendell would say hello to them over in Georgetown, Kentucky. Uh, Sister Margaret Webb. Sister Margaret Webb. Uh, um, Oki and Cassie Thank Shepherd, you. all the members of the Hager Hill Free Will Baptist Church. If you're not at Vacation yeah. Bible School tonight we, and, and you're watching, we'll send this out to you. And just all of our friends and family uh, back in uh, Johnson County. Oh, I'll oh, be flat. That's my fault. I'm in the wrong, <laughs> singing the wrong song. There's a crimson river flowing down the cross where Jesus died. It is flowing down the mountain, through the valley deep and wide. It's a balm to heal our nation, the reservoir of love. I'm talking about my Savior's precious blood. Coming from His throne in glory, man in flesh yet God divine. He walked among us, pure and holy, spotless lamb, oh He did shine. In His veins flows man's redemption, from a heart of perfect love. I'm talking about my Savior's precious blood. It will heal your mind and body. It will save your soul from sin. It will take us back to heaven where it all began. It will take us through the fire. It will take us through the flood. I'm talking about my Savior's precious Well, we have gotten several uh, they've song requests and also a happy, happy anniversary to me and you. And uh, John and Catherine Cox from Powell County, they're, they pledge $50 in honor of us. So that's, that's good. Right. And uh, so some um, right here, um, David, uh, he's been married 10 weeks. And the second week they were married, he was diagnosed with cancer in oh, several organs, and they've chosen no treatments. And they're asking, they've got hospice and praying for a miracle. And that's from Laurel County. Oh. Um, here's, uh, it doesn't say where he's from, but um, the daughter in law's brother got uh, bit by a copperhead last night, and he had to be taken to Tennessee, and he's also not saved. Oh. 
Mm. Um, and here's uh, Geraldine and, and Roy McIntosh. Now they come often, they help every time we call on them, they come if they're able. And uh, they're just asking prayer for them tonight. Yes. Uh, she's a fighting cancer, so we just pray that they'll all go away. Yes. Uh, a son from Letcher County, uh, he's in the hospital emergency room. Um, he's got chest pains and has had heart attacks in the past, needs prayer. Um, and here's uh, David uh, in West Virginia cut his leg to the bone with a saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tanya is in the Lexington Hospital with heart failure. She's on life support and has two heirs to live. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, what would you do if you had no a date and a time that you had to live? And many times, like for my son, when he had that stroke, he was never able to say, uh, I mean, you, he didn't have any voice after that, and, uh, but he could squeeze your hand or shake his head yes or no for about a couple of weeks, and then uh, about two more weeks uh, he died. And uh, so we need every day to keep our lives straightened up. Amen. And uh, right here is uh, one that I thought from Roland County, uh, a lady is in a spiritual battle. Well, that's what we all are. Uh, if they can get us to do something wrong or uh, mistreat somebody, uh, we're all fighting that war. Yeah. And, uh, and then one from Morgan County, uh, he wants to draw, or they, he didn't say what, uh, wants to draw closer to the Lord. Well, to do that, you got to do a little elbow grease in there and read your Bible and uh, know what it's saying and uh, go to church. And there are a lot that you can do that you will feel the presence of the Lord. And I tell you, I don't know why, but sometimes up here, you can just feel uh, if it's what people says or the way what they have brought in with them. But you can feel the Lord. Uh, yeah. One one day I was listening to, uh, they were singing a song. And I tell you, they was chill bumps running up my back. And I thought, boy, this is funny. But um, I know it was the Lord doing that. But yeah. uh, you get a feeling even. Uh, um, and you should always pay attention. And if if you lost your life today, would you have any regrets of what you didn't say or didn't do? And um, we just pray for each one of these. And uh, uh, anytime the singers wants to come back, it'll be all right. But we thank everybody for um, calling in, wishing us happy birthday. And I had that paper over there a while ago, and it was shining. I don't know if it'll be any better. And this is there uh, 16 years ago. And uh, we've had fun. It's been, you don't have to sit by yourself in a restaurant or I always would go in the corner. Uh, and uh, they're just little things that you do when you run around by yourself. And it's not that much fun. So, Bill, you want to introduce the, go back to the singers? Yeah, but I'd like to say something to that one that wants to get closer to the Lord. Nobody can help you do that. You've got to do it yourself. You really want to get close to the Lord? Then just go to him, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. And Lord, just cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Just pray that prayer to save your soul. He's standing with his arms stretched out. He's ready and wants to bless you and save your soul at all times. So you know that you need to be saved. And if you want to grow, You've got to study your Bible. You've got to read it. And you've got to apply it to your life. And then you'll find peace in your soul. You'll find joy and peace and a calm assurance that you're ready to go should you be called out. Try that and see if it don't work. It'll never fail you. And we are happy to have the, our singers back tonight uh, stepping out on faith. So let's go right back over some more Good singing. God bless you folks. 
We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. We do. Amen. Good to be back. Appreciate every opportunity we had to come down here. Uh, I'd like to send this song out to everyone that's watching from our home churches. Everyone from 3rd Avenue Free Baptist Church. I have the privilege to pastor. Uh, so I hope they're watching tonight and seeing this out to them. I also like to send out to all our family that's watching. And I got a little 18-month-old daughter at home that's probably standing in front of the TV saying, Dad, 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 right now. <laughs> So we'll play a good fast one and maybe she'll dance for us there at home. <laughs> so I'll send this out to all them and my wife as well. And I've got some customers up on Route 80 that say they watch uh, this every, every night. So I'd like to send this out to them too. So we'll sing a few, song, a few more songs for you tonight and pray, pray that we'll be a blessing to you. Someday when I stand before the judgment bar, the quick, the risen dead, the Lord will then make known our record there. Our names will all be read. And I'll be ready when the roll is gone. Pure and spotless through the crimson flood. And I will answer when he calls my name. I'm saved through Jesus' blood. part again Amen. our toes will all be your we'll lay our burdens down at Jesus feet and rest forevermore now be ready when the roll is gone pure and spotless through the crimson flood and I will answer when he calls my name I'm saved through Jesus blood It's all a mystery. 
That's good. You I know, was going to try to make it without him. Sometimes we go through things down here that we don't understand, and and um, we just have to lean on the Lord and know that He's there for us, and that it's all in His hands. And uh, a couple of my aunts are going through a, a real hard time right now, and I I'd like to send this out to my aunt Sarah and um, and her husband Salem, and my aunt Ann and Uncle Clarence and Aline and Becky up in Ohio that watch the program faithfully and uh, send this song out to them. It's about the family circle and I know this is my Aunt Sarah's favorite song and you know it seems like my family circle down here is getting smaller but boy it's getting bigger up there and uh, one of these days I'll get to join them. Amen. My family makes it, but if they don't, I'm going anyway. Amen. Give me Jesus. I'm going to switch out there. Give me Jesus. Well, we're, you know, I'm, I'm glad there for a long time, you know, 34 years of my life, uh, I wasn't part of that family circle that was going to make it home. But I'm glad that through and by Jesus Christ and His mercy and His grace that I that I'm going to make it over there one of these days by Him alone. Nothing that I do, nothing good in me, but just for what He done for us on Calvary. Amen. Uh, there's no other way. There's a lot of doctrines out there telling you if you're just good to your neighbor and you're just a good guy and you go with this and you're good to you. But that's not what it is. The Bible said you must be born again. And without the shedding of blood, it says there's no remission of sins. So uh, tonight, listen to this song right here. If you're, if you're in a valley, uh, if you don't know where you're at and you're seeking for something, Jesus Christ is that missing part of the puzzle. Listen to the words of this song right here. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. You can have all this world, give me Jesus.
And when I am alone And when I am alone And when I am alone Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus You can have all this world Give me Jesus And when I come to die And when I come to die And when I come to die Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus You can have all this world Give me Jesus You can have all this world Give me Jesus We had a few requests um, to sing, and so we've done a couple of them. We'll do just a couple more. And uh, this song that we're getting ready to sing was a song I wrote last year. And um, Lester and I not only celebrated our anniversary in July, but also uh, we've been singing together as a group, stepping out on faith. 20 years this month that we've been singing and uh, to all the churches that's uh, invited us to come in and all the places that we've gone to sing and the friends that we've met along this way boy I, I can't even begin to tell you what it means to us and how precious it is and and we thank you so much for it and don't see any place to stop I don't know that uh, that we'll be stopping anytime soon whenever the Lord says he's finished with us that's when we'll stop but uh, but 20 years of singing and I never had written a song and uh, I heard a preacher preaching about all the different taters in the church and I was very curious about what this message could possibly be about and as he started preaching I said well that's a good idea somebody ought to write a song about that and the Lord just kind of spoke to me and said well Wilda you're the ones listening to it so why don't you write the song so I didn't really write it he just uh, he he gave me the words and I wrote them down on paper. I can't take any credit for it, but it's about all the different taters in the church. And uh, so I hope you'll see the humor in it as we sing it. Well, last Wednesday night, our preacher got up and began to speak his mind. He said, it's come to my attention. We're in the middle of a tater fight. Well, we scratched our heads and we looked around, not a tater did we see. Then he began to explain that these taters are you and me. He said, now, oh, spectator, he's a real good guy. He'll show up for every service. He'll watch them preach and pray and sing and listen to their testimonies. But he's not the kind to step up and help. He'd rather keep his seat. And when it's time to lend a hand, that's a tater you'll never meet. And there's another guy sitting in the pew. He loves to hear his own voice. He's got an opinion on everything from the weather to the song leader's choice. Oh, commentator, don't get much done. He sure talks a real good game. He'll tell you all that's going on and just exactly who's to blame. And there's a couple other gals you'll want to avoid. It's best just stay out of their way. Oh, agitator and irritator, those girls will ruin your day. One will stir it up, the other spreads it around. They don't stop till everybody's mad. Then up steps old brother dictator. Oh, Lord, he's twice as bad. But the moral of this story, it's plain to see. These taters must be stopped. Cause sitting in amongst the church pews are a bunch of little tater tots. And these tater tots are good and pure, but they learn from what they see. So it's up to all us big taters to be the tater we should be. Amen. 
Now the Bible clearly tells us what kind of tater we should be. Not a hesitator or an irritator, but a sweet tater, don't you see? And as our preacher said that night, it's either amen or oh me. If God did an inspection, what kind of tater would you be? Cause God's gonna do an inspection, be the tater you should be. And as George uh, always chimes in and says, if you don't get saved, you'll end up being a fried tater, and we don't want any fried taters out there, so get saved. All right. Oh, I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I've got to do that now to be flat. Well, we've been trying to get George to sing some. His mom even encouraged him yesterday morning. <laughs> we was in a service yesterday morning, and she wanted George to sing, but it's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> we're, excuse me, we're lucky to get him to sing the bass part. He, if you notice, he kind of keeps getting farther and farther away from the microphone every time he steps up when he does his picking part. But, you know, we're glad to have these fellas playing with us. Amen. Uh, you know, Philip, he's been with us on and off for over, I guess, well over 10 years, I would say. And George has been with us for about seven years now. Is that right, George? And uh, George was just, a, a, what, a freshman in college? And, uh, and he started playing with us. And we never did think that a young man like that, but, you know, We've got to see a lot of people saved down through the years. You know, Brother Philip can attain to that. And uh, just got to see God move in a mighty, mighty way. And we're just so thankful for He uses us. And uh, we're going to send a song out right now to Cassie and Oki Shepherd, I believe mm -hmm. who it is. This is one of their favorite songs right here. Now, Brother Oki loves this song. We'll sing this for him. flowers to lay on my grave but if I die before you do tell my loved ones not to cry cause I'm not looking for a hole in the ground I'm looking for one in the sky I'm not looking for a hole in the ground I'm looking for one in the sky where I know I'll meet my friends and my loved ones by and by I get a little weary from the love that I carry but I'll never
that riches are told And I'd rather have Jesus Than houses or land I'd rather be led By his nailed star hands Than to be a king of a battle Some friends of ours back home, uh, that's a good friend of mine, Helen Bowles, her son, and Tammy Opshire, her husband, uh, Sunday week ago, uh, 45 years old, got up out of the bed and just, Lord took him home that fast. But you know, he was ready to go was the main thing. And uh, just like you remember that family, she's battling lung cancer. She just went through a bunch of radiation and chemo treatments, and she just got a good report from that. And then the Lord decided to take her husband home. So. Uh, I want you to remember them in your prayers uh, right now because, you know, she's going through a hard time. But as long as you trust and lean on Jesus, as he just said, you know, I'd rather him, have him as anything in the world, you know. No more, nothing in this world. No money could buy anything. The happiness and the peace that I feel. Uh, a good friend of ours preached yesterday morning, and he said this, and I never really, I've seen it, but I've thought about it. But when they were out on the ship and the storm had come upon them, the tempest, and Jesus was asleep in the boat, Jesus was still asleep, but the disciples had to go down there and wake him up because they were afraid of the storm. He was down there. He wasn't worried about it, you know. So sometimes that's what we have to do. We just have to ride that storm and know that Jesus Christ is in control. And he'll get us safely to the other side. Amen. Laying up my treasures in their home 
above Trusting fully, trusting in the Savior's love Doing what I can for you is holy done And I'm getting ready to leave this world Getting ready to leave this world Getting ready for the gates of pearl Keeping my record right, watching both days Of his saving grace In each earthly trial I his love can trace Surely up in heaven I shall find a place And I'm getting ready To leave this world Getting ready To leave this world Getting ready For the gates of pearl Keeping my record bright Watching both day and night And I'm getting ready To leave this world said I'll go Amen. and if it were not true I would have told you so just a little while to linger here below that I'm getting ready to leave this world getting ready to leave this world getting ready for the gates of pearl keeping my record right watching both day and night I'm getting ready Again, as we said, we thank you so much for having us here tonight. And uh, again, we want to wish Bill and Shannon a happy anniversary and many more to come for them, we pray. We're going to sing a song that says just what we're doing. We're walking in the highway. We certainly uh, thank the singers, and someone from uh, Johnson County said, Dave, I was hoping you'd sing, uh, I just want to thank you, Lord. And, uh, and that's what we do here at the station. We thank the Lord for uh, the things that happens and that uh, goes on. Right here from uh, Breathitt County, James and Nalene Hall, they pledge his... Um, Twenty dollars in honor of our anniversary. Well, That's nice. Thank you. And wishing them the best. Yeah. Um, here's uh, Pat Crider. Singers are doing a good job, and happy anniversary to us. 
Uh, here's a man that, um, Laurel County, he surgery two months ago and still in a lot of pain. Uh, here's uh, Billy from Fayette, uh, chest to hurting. Uh, sister from Morgan County's got a hole in her eye and pray that they can fix it. Um, Morgan County, Brenda has kidney problems and other health problems. And um, right here is uh, someone from Clay County has, uh, Vaughn has cancer, a nephew has a tumor on the liver, and sister is in the nursing home. Right here is um, a sister in Richmond has been admitted to the hospital. And uh, uh, Barbara called in from Corbin County has, um, cancer of the liver, and she is a Christian. Um, and then uh, here's uh, from Rock Castle. Uh, her and her husband's getting a divorce, and two children are involved. Pray for the complete family. Um, a lady from Madison, um, she needs prayers. The daughter has cancer, and brother has Parkinson. Uh, here's Fern from um, Somerset. She's 77 years old and has had, um, well, the way they spell the name, I don't know if this is a woman or a man, F-E-R-N-E -E -E from Somerset, 77 years old and has had 17 surgeries. Mm -hmm. And she loves to hear Bill sing Great Speckled Bird. And sometimes I fuss at him because he sings it so often. I'm thinking, people are getting tired of that, but they must not be, so good for her. Uh, here's from friends from Whitley. Uh, they're in the hospital in Lexington, the ICU. Uh, Phyllis, um, uh, well, she's called in by Phyllis. Her husband has got cancer, April the 30th, and the VA is suggesting hospice. Um, and here's from Corbin. He's uh, got high blood pressure and diabetes, and the brother has cancer. Seems like so many has got cancer. But, you know, we don't know. Sometimes they're healed over here, and sometimes they take them home and heal them. They do a better job, I guess, when they take them home, because that is uh, uh, for all time. It's good. Now, we've had uh, um, phone operators upstairs, and they've sent down a bunch, and uh, we just thank everybody for uh, calling in. and. And then Margaret will be back tomorrow night. She's just letting us use her time tonight. And we're trying to celebrate her. But I, I forgot. I'm going to wait till tomorrow and go somewhere. But <laughs> we, somewhere uh, we was out all day yesterday. But now tomorrow I'm going somewhere else. Oh. Um, I, I, I remembered some uh, coupons. I mean, not coupons. It's a, a restaurant. We got a... A Christmas card or something with the, and we can eat a whole lot at uh, at this restaurant, and so <laughs> that's probably where we go tomorrow. But we do appreciate everybody uh, being tuned in, and uh, uh, that uh, everybody is seem like it's got sick in the family, and um, so uh, Yuri brings some more. Thank you. Uh, Let's say went to uh, hear somebody from, well, I don't know where it's from, but they went to the UK for cancer, and this is in the Lord's hand. Brother has cancer, sister has tests for gallbladder. And uh, uh, Dora Bush called in, and she wants to say happy birthday to us. And you know, I met her one time, and she seemed so nice. Uh, it was a bad time to meet her but it was at her funeral of her husband but she seemed such a nice lady um, David from Whitley has had a stroke and is in the hospital in Lexington uh, Lisa and family from uh, Madison needs uh, a prayer and uh, here's one from uh, Madison uh, needs a job and uh, here's uh, just ask for prayer Here's from Fayette County. They're asking for a prayer. And um, Fayette County, uh, Dallas is. And, and here's a lady enjoying the singing. Want to see them back soon. So uh, 
I remember the first time they came. They'd stand over in the corner there where the piano was at, and they scared to death. <laughs> but <laughs> that's been a long time ago, about 18 or 19 years ago. Um, here's from Woodford uh, County. She has had uh, colon surgery, and she has another surgery scheduled for August the 2nd. And she's also a diabetic, so a special prayer for her. Uh, from Jackson, um, mother's in the hospital with heart trouble. Uh, now, I know more about heart trouble, and Bill knows more about the cancer because that's what his wife died with cancer. And um, so both of them, you know, anytime you're sick enough, it can take your life. And... Uh, <coughs> So we, uh, I'll turn this over to Bill and let him do some talking and pray yeah, for these. Let's get these things up there. Okay. We got to get them ready to go here. We got to pray for them. And uh, I do want to thank uh, Step It Out on Faith. They've done an excellent job tonight. And I'd still like to say to that person that wanted to get closer to Christ, I hope and pray that you'll listen to what I've said because you have to do it. We can't. We'd love to. We wish we could. But if you haven't, call up here. There's people up here that'll lead you to the Lord. Amen. Tell you what you have to do and they'll, they'll pray with you and pray for you. And uh, I know that he's calling on you, so don't put him off. Accept him now while he's near. He's calling at you, so accept the Lord. Oh, we got to go to prayer and, and pray for these uh, for these requests. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you, Lord, for this privilege to be in your sanctuary. Lord, where we can feel your presence, Lord, and and relax from the troubles of the outside world, Lord, where there's so much trouble going on, so much sin, and, and it just, it's so bad, Lord, that I don't see how you can let it go much longer. We don't know what day you're coming back, Jesus, but we do know you're coming back. And we just ask you, Lord, to help us to do all that we can, Lord, to reach the lost before it's too late. Lord, we want to thank you for these singers that's driven a long ways to sing praises to you, for our camera operators, and each one of the staff, Lord, for the work that they've done. But most of all, Lord, we want to thank you for your presence here tonight, and you know the needs of each and every request that's called in. We just ask you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, minister to these people as only you can do. Bless them, Lord, and help them to, to grow closer to you and to do your will, Lord, in all things. Trust you, Lord, the main thing is to put their faith in you. And just ask, and you said if we'd ask, we would receive. If we ask in faith, believing, not doubting. So, Lord, we just ask you to take charge. And, Lord, we pray for Sister Margaret, Lord, and she'll probably be back tomorrow night. And we pray for each and every one of the staff and ask you, Lord, to bless and keep them in your care. And all that's accomplished, Lord, will never fail to bear them where they head. Give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Oh, my, our time has come and gone. Looks like we just run out of time, so we want to thank each one that's tuned in. And then we bid you good night and God bless you.
Sufferings untold 